If you're familiar with the town of Shelburne, Vermont at all, there's a good chance it's because of its unusual museum. Most museums claim they are unique, but we are. Describing the Shelburne Museum is something of a challenge. Let's see, there is the very first Monet to come to America and Manet's to go with the Monet's, thousands of hand-whittled circus figures, not to be confused with the 500-foot circus parade, odd shop signs, hundreds of glass canes, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the boat. This is Americana with a capital A, and you know every building you go into, you will find some lesson about who we are uh, as a country, both in the 19th century and today. Tom Denenberg, director of Shelburne Museum, sometimes referred to as a collection of collections. The museum is the life's work of Electra Havemeyer Webb. The key to understanding Electra Webb is she never purchased one of anything. If it was worth owning, you go very deep. Electra Havemeyer had a privileged upbringing on Park Avenue in New York City. Her parents were avid art patrons and early collectors of Impressionist art. In fact, Impressionist Mary Cassatt even painted Electra and her mother. So her parents were less than thrilled when young Electra brought home her first collectible, a cigar store figure. And her mother looked at her and said, oh, Electra, what have you done? Her mother had no idea what was to follow. Electra began buying weather vanes by the hundreds, carriages by the dozens. With her impeccable eye, Electra Havemeyer Webb amassed a world-class collection of what would later come to be known as folk art. Of course, back then it wasn't recognized as what we call today folk art, but it's what, it's what she saw beauty in everyday objects. Leslie Wright says Webb was fearless in her conviction. She took quilts and put them on the walls, and people thought, what are quilts doing on walls? But she really saw beauty in the, in the things that people made in the craftsmanship. When Webb founded the museum 75 years ago, she began moving historic structures onto the 45-acre campus, barns to covered bridges. That's when she got what was, even for her, a crazy idea. Entered the Ticonderoga. Ryan Miller was a reluctant transplant from New York City, and he lived nearby for years before he had any curiosity at all about the history museum down the road. And then that's when I saw a photograph of the boat, the Ticonderoga, in the middle of the museum. And I was like, wait a second, I think I need to like quit being cranky about this. The Ticonderoga was the last paddle wheel steamer on Lake Champlain. In 1954, it made its final voyage, a two mile, three month journey over specially laid tracks to its current home on the museum lawn. Miller jumped aboard, becoming a member of the museum and a full-fledged fan of Electra Webb. Ultimately, a collection reveals a lot about the, the collector, and her eye is like, I really, mostly I just really wish that she was around so we could hang out. I would like to hang out with Electra because it's a weird situation here. One might say Miller is a connoisseur of the weird. I think the per capita of weird to, you know, it's pretty, the weird and wonderful people is pretty high here. His Substack blog, Weird and Wonderful World, a celebration of the unusual and off-center. A few years back, Miller explored similar themes in his Vermont public television show, Making Friends with Ryan Miller. Hi everybody, this is Ryan Miller. On today's episode, we're gonna talk with Alan Newman. Over 12 episodes, Miller seeks out what he refers to as high-functioning weirdos, inventors, artists, and offbeat performers. That's my whole gig. High-functioning weirdos and weird and wonderful places. These are like my two, my, my passions. Well, it's not Miller's only gig. You see, when he's not tracking down weirdos, he's the lead singer for the rock band Guster. In New York and in LA, you know, my friends are artists, writers, actors, musicians, and it's a very deep well of these people. And here, it's very wide. 
Miller has come to appreciate that his Vermont friends include weirdos from all walks of life, farmers, the physicists, some of whom he met on his TV show. Now that he's finding his people, Vermont is feeling a lot more like home. It feels much cooler than like hanging out with like B-level celebrities in LA. I mean, no offense to my B-celebrity friends in LA. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ryan Miller's move to Vermont was prompted by his wife, who's a Vermont native, after they had their children. Well, and his band Guster is actually currently, currently on tour. They're on the West Coast right mm. now, and they'll be at Carnegie Hall in New York City Thanksgiving weekend. And we can only hope that he comes back with some more weird stuff. Oh, he's going to find it. He I love will. his attitude. <laughs>